Hi everyone and welcome to Game Club. Today we're in the desert racing camels in the game where you race camels. In Camel Up, join us as we open up, play and review. Right, let's start with unboxing. Right, okay, so first things first, the box. Yeah, I like the box. I mean, it's I, I actually like this box art compared to the, there is another version of the box art, which is quite, um, I would say nicely, it's it's a bit kind of bog standard and basic. This one is a little bit more, um, plays into that sort of 30s-esque, sort of uh, pre-Second World War type um, Egyptian sort of myth building and kind of majesty. I mean, I, I call it, post actually maybe Paul, Paul Bowles which is just after the war type uh, Egypt, Egyptian or, or Arab fetishization but actually it's quite fun um, right let me just see if I can get open the box uh, just almost there there we go right okay and then inside we've got our camel up um, this is our camel up instructions it's quite good we've got our tokens and more tokens our board which isn't bad at all. Uh, we've got our big pyramid and we've got our player cards, our smaller tokens, gold and silver, dice and our camels. Brilliant. So it's all there and all ready to go. Excellent. Right now join us as we will then play and then review Camel Up. So everyone in front of me is Camel Up set up and ready to go. Um, in front of me you can see the four players with the seven coins each. I've done them as five and two, but obviously some people might want it all as ones, which is very bizarre, but hey, that's their choice. We are going to set up the camels now, which is the first thing you do. You roll the dice and you basically look at all of the numbers here and you put them in. So red will start at two, blue will start at two, uh, yellow starts at three, green starts at one, purple starts at two, and that's it. Then we've got uh, three spaces back, one, two, three. So with your black and white quote unquote crazy camels, they have to firstly face the other way. So they're going anti-clockwise or you're going clockwise. And then what you do is you determine, uh, roll the dice and basically indicate on there. So if it's one, it'll be space 16, two, space 15, and three, space 14. So it's obviously three steps back. Um, roll the grey dice again and put the second crazy camel in the same way. So what you do is then you take it and you roll and even if you get, because it's colour coded to blue or uh, white or black, sorry, even if you get white say, you can then put the black one on there as well, two spaces back. Okay, and then you take these dice and you place them in your pair, ready to go, put then the lid on. I would recommend keeping the booklet with you. It's a very well written booklet, so it's quite helpful that way. I'm just going to quickly sit down and then show you the other things to give each player are their betting. These are the player tokens, so we'll put them each here. One, two, three, and I will do four. The rest will stay there. Our first player token, which will be for this gentleman here, and that will shift as we play. And then, of course, you've got to put your one tokens here which go in front of it for the dice and your betting slips will go there. These are not part of the game because we're not playing um, the joint uh, sort of association style rules. I'm just putting them there just so they're out of the way but I just thought I'd mention it because they are part of the game but in truth I would recommend playing and learning this version first. So you've got four options now on what you can do and I'm just going to put the, show you the booklet again because they're quite well outlined but there's some bits missing from it. But anyway, the first option is to take a betting ticket. You can choose one of these betting tickets and as you can see here, you've got to order them that they start with a five, then the three and then they descend to two and they descend also to two. So it's two twos, one three and one five. And obviously the first person to take one of these gets, well basically could get a rich reward. You're only allowed to take one of them though, um, and basically what happens is, oh so there's no, apologies, there's no limit to the uh, betting tickets you may collect throughout the leg. You may ha even have several of the same colour, so you can effectively double up, triple up if you wish to, but 
And we've got to remember, losses will also mount as well. As you'll see, if, for instance, you lose, if it comes in any of the third, then you lose one coin. And so that can be slightly detrimental to your cause. So you, I would recommend choosing rationally and also choosing logically. But the game, you know, betting games often have that. And this is, this is a push your luck slash betting game. Placing your spectator tile. Now these spectator tiles will go on the board anywhere along here. Any camel that lands on it, if it, for instance, was on this side, they will get plus one, they will move one space forward and you will gain a coin. If you flip it over though, they will move back one space and you will still gain a coin. Once again, can be beneficial, can also be basically being in purgatory sometimes and I've had it twice where it's got me out, which is never good. Next thing is you can take a pyramid ticket. These pyramid tickets, they confuse some people, but what effectively happens is you take this and you gain one coin. You then get to shake your pyramid, press the button, and that will be the, the, the basically the camel that will move. You have to move it, and so effectively, as you'll see here, so I'll just turn these around the right way, as you'll see here, for instance, the, the black camel will move in that role, but you will move them around and you can obviously, other players could have laid down their spectator cubes or other players can benefit from that, but you will always get one until this runs out. Once that runs out, effectively you don't get anything for it, but at that point is the case of when you've got to think tactically and other options. Now that is three of the moves. The fourth and final one, which is weirdly enough is secreted right at the back here. Uh, is the bet on the overall winner of the, or overall loser. Now, at the top of the board here, you have your overall winner. If you wish to decide which one, say for instance, I think blue is going to be the winner, I will put my card like that and I will place it here. And if I'm right at the end of the race, and they'll turn it over and they'll see it's blue, then I gain first is eight, and obviously then descending down, you get five, three, two, and one coins. And if you get, obviously, it lasts then it, you get minus one so once again you have to play on that the other thing to remember as well is that you can have the loss as well so if you think a particular camel is going to be last you can play here as well and the thing is that the rules that are stated here are a little bit kind of you may instead bet on the overall loser backing the racing camel that you believe will be last on the racetrack at the end of the game by secretly choosing one of your finishing cards and putting it face down onto the betting space for the overall loser. If you already, if you, if there are already any cards on your chosen betting space, put yours on top of them. Once placed, a card must stay where it is, even if the, if you later realise you're back the wrong hawk, the wrong camel. However, as long as you have finished cards in hand, you may also choose as your action to place one of them into either betting space. So you've got to remember that there's spaces that start from the bottom to the top. If you get last, you get eight, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But you can obviously lose as well. So it's just, you've got to remember about the, the idea of gaining as much as you can from it. Only it's slightly confusing that, but effectively what happens is whoever's the bottom card gets eight if they're right, and it goes all the way up until the person who is at the top Will get minus one if they happen to either lose or they happen to be in the wrong position so that's how it works so that's on this side is for win this side is for lose final thing to note as well is that this game is a leg based game so every time you race effectively you'll reset the game bar the tote bar the coin sorry everything else is reset you'll take your spectator cubes and you'll start again and all of these cubes you'll get paid out for and you'll get paid out for your tokens and you'll get paid out for your uh, cards that you put on there for particular options and that's it that's the game in its entirety it's pretty pretty simple i will now go over um how basically the game works now just to note just i would recommend if you get a chance because if you hopefully if you bought this you will get this and if you're looking to buy you'll get to see this the player if any that placed the first card showing the actual winner of the race receives eight pounds in the bank. The player, if any, who placed the second card showing the winner receives five. Third player, three. Fourth player, two. All other players, one. Note that if only applies to cards showing the actual winner. For each card in the deck that show any camel other than the winner, you'll lose one Egyptian pound. Don't forget that. Do not forget that. Right, that's it. 
that's the game. Effectively then it will finish once you've done 10 rounds or 5 rounds or how many rounds and that's the game. Camel Up is probably one of the best racing games ever made. It's the best racing game ever made, probably, because of five reasons. One, the turns are so succinct, so well put together, and the, the movement within that so well plotted that basically it makes for a very enjoyable game. Tense, it's erratic, it's compelling, it's fun. Two, now I didn't mention this when I did the playthrough, but effectively what happens is when you move, if you land on another camel, you basically jump on their back and you're, you're part of a chain. So you can end up with five camels all together, which we've done. If you roll, say for instance, green is second in that chain and you roll green, then that jumps off and runs off with whatever camels on top of it. Great fun. If you get your black or white camel land on it, then you end up going in the wrong direction, which can also be good fun as well. It's all worked exceptionally well as, as making a fun and, and, to be fair, sporadically strange game. Three, the game has within it the option to be as big or as small as you want. You can play two players without much fuss. It, it, it does actually work quite well with two players. And as it says here, three to eight, I would say you can get away with two. It's difficult, it's tricky, but what there is online, and there is a, a very interesting option online, you can basically s sandwich in a third player, who is basically the game, and they will do all the work for you. Eight plus. Four. Eight plus. That, I'd actually say is six plus. Young kids can understand the game. The bits of the betting, for instance, they might not fully get, but I think overall, a kid will be able to pick it up enough that they'll be able to play it and get enjoyment from it. Simple as that. The game is silly, quirky, and, and has that sort of oddity value that, that I think is really investable in small children's experience with games. Four. 30 minutes. You know what? We played this for almost two hours. We loved it. It was not the sort of game that you can stop and start at 30 minutes, but it can be played up to 30 minutes if, say, for instance, you do three rounds, you can do 10 rounds, you can do however many rounds you want. It's really quite fun like that. And it works really well with a family or, for instance, if you've got people coming over and you want a, a game night fun. And then five, the artwork. Souped up since the original time, this new version looks good, great thematically looks, feels good, great texture looks, and generally plays good, which is a real testament to the ideas that have been put together in the booklet itself. And I think that if you say, for instance, Stefan Bogen has made a masterpiece, I wouldn't say you're far off. So, camel up, definitely, if you can, camel up.